na 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 Jared, we're through group winners, come on! What's going on guys? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another review for you guys today. It's Sevilla nil, Chelsea 4 and we said this game was going to be harder than the Spurs match but it really didn't look like that. And with all the changes that we made to the starting lineup, the amount of selection headaches that Frank Lampard's going to be having going into the next few games for Chelsea is going to be crazy. But with how messed up the fixture list is, I think everyone is going to get the correct amount of game time that they deserve. And there is a lot of players that deserve a lot of game time right now based off the performance. What a performance today, guys. Let me know what you're saying down in the comment section below before I go into this review. As per usual, if you guys haven't done so already, please hit that like button, press that subscribe button, hit the bell notification button as well, and sub to Blues Fan TV if you want to hit all those four goals, just like Olivier Giroud did tonight. And yeah, let's go straight into this match. The lineup came out and there was a lot of rotations. I thought Frank Lampard was going to rotate, but I didn't think he was going to rotate that much. Rudiger and Christensen came back into the starting lineup with both Zuma and Thiago Silva out injured. Emerson also came into the starting lineup with Azpilicueta and with Azpilicueta playing on the right and Ben Chill well rested. We had Jorginho, Kovacic and Havertz in midfield, which was, I think, two changes from the last game against Tottenham with Mason Mount and Kante rested. And Hudson-Odoi, Pulisic and Giroud up front, which was all change up front. And people were worried. I was a little bit worried, but people were thinking, was that maybe too much changes that we wanted to make in that match where we may be underestimating Sevilla? Nah. We're talking about the depth of this squad and if you if you want to talk about why we should be taken seriously as league as title contenders if you want to talk about why we should be taken seriously as title contenders because of our depth depth is what gets you across the line especially in this season with how bad the fixture list is looking with the rush to try and get the season finished before the end of may so they can start the euros in 2021 Season is going to be a madness, but when we have players that don't play every week playing at the level that they're playing at in this sort of game, if we can have that consistently, there's no reason why we can't go for the Premier League title, especially with the way this season is looking. But moving back on into the Champions League, we were amazing today. First goal came very early, eight minutes in from Olivier Giroud. Kai Havertz driving the ball down forwards. Nice little bit of link-up play with, I think, Hudson Doy and Aspilicueta set up for Olivier Giroud in a nice bit of space to make a nice turn and, put, and finesse into the top left corner. First off, it was a bit of a struggle for long periods. Sevilla was very 50-50 with us. There was a lot of fouls that were being given away on both sides. Sevilla are a dirty club, but we know Sevilla to be a dirty club. They have previous with that with other English clubs. We were giving away too many fouls. We were struggling to keep possession for long periods of the game. But whenever we were in possession, we did look dangerous. Mateo Kovacic and Kai Havertz looked excellent in the number eight positions again. Callum hudson doys off the ball movement was immense. And I'm glad he had another start after being dropped for the Spurs game. Because that's good man, man management for him. And that'll probably keep his confidence up as well. The defence was also solid as well. Rudiger and Christensen, two players that have been having quietly good seasons for Chelsea so far, have been very good whenever they've been called up for Chelsea this season and they need to be given the credit that, it, that they deserve to be given because they've been really good this season. But the first half was a bit of a struggle. We did well to go in there at 1-0. They had a couple chances but we did well with them whenever we had to manage. Second half though, we really pulled away and it was just the genius of Olivier Drude. Mateo Kovacic for the second goal. I want to give him credit for the nice little time through assist because we don't really see that too much from him and I'm glad that it's becoming a much more regular feature of his game ever since we've gone into this 4-3-3 formation. Olivier Drude as well though, the feint for the second goal and then chipping the goalkeeper with his weak foot. 
This is why we need to keep Olivier Giroud. I know it's basically bait opinion for all Chelsea fans right now, but there's still worries about whether he ends up going in January or not. And I've said it plenty of times on this channel. I'm going to say it here again. We are not going to find a number three striker as good as Olivier Giroud who is going to sit behind Timo Werner and Tammy Abraham. I'm sure if we are seriously invested in this title race, that will be enough to convince Olivier Giroud to stay. He's won everything in England except the Premier League. He will want that before he leaves. End of the season, cool. Let him go with his head held high, lifting the Premier League, maybe lifting the Champions League, but we'll keep quiet about that. But we're doing well for ourselves so far. Four wins in a row for the first time since 2012, and we all know what happened back in 2012. But we're not going to say too much. I'm just going to keep speaking it into existence because I am gassed right now, and I know all you guys who are still here watching are gassed as well. Third goal, Angolo Kante. This is the stuff you learn from Maurizio Sarri about how good to be going forward. That cross was excellent. The guy came forward, I think he was playing back in his natural position of box to box centre mid. It was an excellent cross for him to find Olivier Drew for the perfect hat trick. And then just as we thought it was all said and done, we got another penalty. And I honestly thought Jorginho was going to take that. But instead, we went for the Olivier Drew stat pad. And now I think only Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo have scored more goals in Europe than Olivier Drew since the start of the 18-19 season. We called this guy the Europa League R9. We might have to start calling him the Champions League R9 if these results keep continuing for Olivier Giroud and like we already said selection headaches all over the place but it's a very good performance from us it means Krasnodar means absolutely nothing and that's been the main thing that I've been talking about for the last few weeks because that little break is going to be so vital over the next few weeks after that two away days in the space of three days straight after the Krasnodar game and then comes the Christmas and Boxing Day and New Year's fixtures that are going to torch every side in the Premier League where we have another two games in the space of three days when we face Arsenal away and Aston Villa at home. We need to be on job. Good thing with the Krasnodar game doesn't mean it doesn't mean anything anymore. We can play the under 18s. We can give someone, maybe give a fan a free place to play for Chelsea for the day. I don't care. Maybe get Kepa back in in goal. Give him an appearance. He might actually play well. You never know. I won't say that too much, but we can play wherever we want. We can rest the entire first team, and that's going to be so key going into Christmas. But guys, I am gassed. Timo Werner's also got rest. I do want to add that as well. And Olivier Drude is aging like a fine wine. Now let's go straight into the player ratings. We'll start off in goal with Edouard Mendy, who again had a bit of a quiet game, especially as it went towards the second half, but was good whenever, whenever we needed him. And he had a solid game. Solid couple saves in the match, so we're going to give him a seven. As for Equator, I thought was brilliant down that left hand, no, down that right hand side. Especially in the first half. The first half, we had that entire right hand side on lock. I'm going to give him an 8. He had a brilliant performance. All defence, by the way, I will just say had a great performance. So both two centre backs, Christensen and Rudiger, had very solid performances, like I said before, have been quietly solid this season and need. I will say definitely for Christensen, doesn't deserve half the criticism he's been getting this season. Rudiger as well. Rudiger's had a very solid start to season two. He's been getting more praise though, which is why I'm a bit quieter about it. Christensen's been getting a lot of stick this season. I think it's poorly deserved. Both of them get sevens for me. Emerson is another one that gets a seven. And I know I've been saying that this guy should be getting sold with Marcus Alonso. But if he continues to have performances like that, I will happily take the L and just have him back as a second left back. I'll be happy with that if he continues these sorts of performances. He was brilliant all over that left hand side throughout the 90 minutes. He gets a seven too. Jorginho, smart presses all game, smart passes all round. It was another solid performance. It felt more like a vintage Jorginho performance for him, so he gets a 7-2. Mateo Kovacic, great, great assist for Giroud for the second goal. Another brilliant force with Kai Havertz driving forward, and as usual, impressible at his best. He gets an 8 for me. Kai Havertz as well, he gets another 8, and this is exactly what I mean when I'm talking about there is a massive selection headache for Frank Lampard looking at our midfield. Havertz, you wouldn't want to bench him. Mount, you wouldn't want to bench him. Kante, you wouldn't want to bench him. Kovacic, same thing. Jorginho keeps up these performances, same thing as well. And we also got to forget about Billy Gilmore. He's also there too. He needs a bit of game time as well every now and then. Good thing we have three fix. Good thing we have a fixture every three or four days for the next month because they'll all get a bit of time to eat on the pitch. So good thing for all three of them. We're going to move into the front three now. Callum Hudson-Odoi. 
Uh, runs were ignored a little bit, but I thought he was good. His involvement for the first goal, I'm not going to forget that. It was strong from him. Off the ball movement was excellent and he looked smart in possession, so I'm going to give him a 7. Christian Pulisic, I thought he played well on the ball. He was really hard to get the ball off, but I think he held on to the ball too much and was trying to do a little bit too much. Um... I'm in a positive mood, so I'm giving him a 7. I really don't care. Moving on to Olivier Giroud. Four goal Giroud. Now, his movement was ridiculous. Being able to get in behind players and use his strength as, a, as an advantage. And little feints. He's looked so much smarter every time he steps onto the pitch. Hold up play was amazing. He used his strength to his advantage. And Olivier Giroud getting in, in behind even at his age. Excellent performance. 10 out of 10 for him. Moving on to Timo Werner. Nearly won the team a penalty and injected a lot of pace into the side in the last 10 to 15 minutes. He's going to get a 6 from me. Kante, good assist for the third goal. Gives him a, gives him a 7. I gave Timo a 6, so he'll get a 7. Ziyech, good in possession, but not for too long. So he'll get a 6. And Billy Gilmore will get a 6 for me as well. It's a very positive night for me, and I hope it's a positive night for you guys as well. We are through as group winners, which means we are probably going to get a favourable fixture. And it means Krasnodar doesn't mean anything, and we can rest the entire third team. Let me know how gassed you guys are down in the comments section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. Take care. Leeds next. Up the Chelsea.